Welcome back. Not many people have an insider look at the fashion world from many angles, but Lauren Chan does. She is a model, a former fashion editor, clothing designer, and body positivity advocate who is fighting for size inclusion in the industry. And we're about to sit down with her right now. Please welcome Lauren Chan. <laughs> TV, I'm, I'm hugging you. It's yeah, we're allowed. Opportunity. These days, these days, I'm asking, like, can I hug? Can right. I hug you? Are you okay? Because some Hi, people everyone. are not okay with it. Telepathic hugs over there. <laughs> we're so happy you're with us, Lauren. You're based in New York. You're a Canadian girly. Yes. We claim you as ours. <laughs> and earlier this month, you were in Toronto for the grandest night of fashion, walking in a show with some familiar faces: Miles Sexton, the Jeannie Becker. Yes. And you say for you, this was like a real full circle moment. Tell us about that. It was, and to know me is to know that I love a full circle moment. They just feel so good. Yeah. Um, and it was full circle in, in a number of ways. So it was the Canadian Arts and Fashion Awards 10 year anniversary that was the presenter of this show. Yeah. Um, it's also my 10 year anniversary of, of working in the fashion industry. And the first opportunity that I had was at Fashion Magazine as an intern. And I'm from Brantford, Ontario, and I still lived there. So I took a train in every day to Union State and when I got out of the station, the first thing I would look up at is that historic, iconic Fairmont Royal York building. Yes. Um, and then I would walk to the fashion office and, and, and the rest is kind of history. Um, and then this September, I was also able to write a piece for the fashion magazine issue. And I love that. You're walking with like fashion icons. You are a fashion icon, <laughs> which is incredible. So you've been making some very cool moves this year including being in Sports Illustrated Swimsuit. Yes, she was. Yes, she is. You look fierce. Thank you. Talk to me about owning your sexuality while being in a quote unquote bigger body. Well, thank you so much for yeah. the fierceness compliment. I yes. so appreciate that. Um, I think what was really pivotal to me about being in a bigger body than a quote unquote typical model and mm -hmm. being in Sports Illustrated Swimsuit was that I'm in a place where I actually wasn't focused on that. And that is thanks to so many years of work on, on body image in myself. And the way that I was able to kind of gauge that was that I had about five weeks warning or heads up that I was going to be um, in the issue yeah. and I spent those five weeks working on my message what I would say what I wanted to impart on people but there is an old version of me yeah. that would have spent every minute of those five weeks trying to get as small as possible as toned as possible and as close to what I thought a swimsuit model is supposed to look like yes that is growth it's that growth, is growth and, and evolution, and it's hard. It is, but I think that we're here so that I can say, you know, we are so much more than what we look like. We are right. our message and how we want to connect and what we want to impart on other people. I believe that. I very much believe that. Now, in the magazine, you discuss your experience about coming out and getting divorced, two very big things. What has life been like since then? Well, it's it's looking pretty good. Look it's where we are. Good. Um, it's been magical, and I think that anyone who has come out um, in any sense of the word kind of just knows that feeling of things clicking into place. Yeah. Um, and I'm really trying to relish in that and take time to notice those small moments and the big moments where that feels like the case. Yeah. And I think that it's a result of all the vulnerability that I kind of led with over the past year, both with myself and in my personal relationships. Well, I guess three ways and, and with you all. Yeah. Um, and so I'm really trying to take a moment and encourage others as well to be vulnerable because I really do believe it begets greatness. It begets greatness and it also allows people to attach to you. You know, that's what we were talking about backstage, for you to be able to come here and stand in your space and be very open and honest. It's, it's, it's a service to you and it's a service to us. So thank you for that, because your growth then reflects on us, and we get to learn the lessons as well. Oh, my goodness. Well, you do it every day, and you do it so well on social as well. Oh, so thank, thank you, too. I'm such a fan for that reason. I think maybe that's your point, is that, like, oh, I feel like I know you. I feel like you've helped yeah. me, and it's because you share your real self. Thank you. Yeah, it's easier that way. <laughs> It's so much easier Isn't it? to live life that way. It's like, I'm just one person. <laughs> I want to talk about the pressure to be the right size kind of plus size model. Because there is sort of a, a type that we see. It's, it's an hourglass. It's a certain proportion. 
they're plus, but they're not really over a 14, I wouldn't say, in the, you know, in the, the fashion world. Is there pressure? Do you feel like you can't lose or gain weight? Well, first, I think there's certainly a plus size ideal, yeah. just as there is a beauty ideal that we all know as the kind of sample size model who's tall, thin, Eurocentric, et cetera, et cetera. Yeah. And that is that curvy, size 14-ish woman who also in the past has tended to be white, even though that body type is something that really naturally occurs and has been taken from the black community. Yeah. Um, I will say we have come so far in that there is so much diversity in the kinds of representation, whether you're talking models or actresses or, or public figures who are above sample size. Yeah. And that's really beautiful. Working as a model and as an editor for Vogue and Glamour led you to create your own plus size fashion brand. Henning, which was just sold to Universal Standard. She just sold a company, y'all. Okay, and what was it like creating that brand and what did you learn during this process? Henning was incredible. It was it was really a labor of love and a passion project for myself and others who had the same experience um, with fashion that I did. But it was also a professional mission to show that plus size fashion is a viable business. Mm -hmm. And so I really think I learned two top lessons in those categories. And I yeah. do want to take some time and talk through the personal one because um, it was revolutionary to my own body image. Yeah. And that is that clothing is not meant to fit us. It is not built to fit us. It's not supposed to. The way that clothing is made is that brands make a sample. They might refine it a few times, but eventually they get to a process, part in the process where this one sample is fit on one singular fit model, a real person, yeah. one of them. That person tends to have measurements that that brand deems um, desirable. average or desirable for whom yeah. they would like their customer to be. Mm -hmm. And then they nail the fit of that sample on that one person. From there, that garment is taken and graded up and down in size with math. It's all done on machines and computers and not often cross-referenced on um, real people. And so all I mean to say by that is, if it's not meant to fit us in the first place, and we know that information of how it's built, we can't then blame ourselves and get down on ourselves when it doesn't fit. Mm -hmm. We shouldn't be changing our bodies. We should be altering clothes. They're not even meant to fit us in the first place. There was one more thing you wanted to say. Yes, and then the professional lesson that I learned is that the way to have success in plus size fashion is to give plus size people positions of power. And I think that can be implied to any demographic. Yep. If you are trying to reach a community that has not previously been been served, you cannot appropriate that lived experience and go try to create a product and sell it to them. You have to give those folks positions of power. Mm -hmm. That's the only way we move from tokenism. Lauren, thank you so much. So wise. We're behind you for being 100%. Thank you. Love you. We're headed to break. See you on the other side.